I'm going to walk through just at the beginning, show you some of the things that um, that I make, the possibilities, and then I'll talk a little bit about the difference between using a felted sweater and a non-felted sweater. You can use both for today, it doesn't matter. Some of the things I make are things like uh, hot water bottle covers, okay? You can make hats. You can make a tea cozy. So this is just a tea cozy from a sweater. One of my favorite designs. And you can make leg warmers for kids or adults. Anybody really? I've seen lots of people wear them as arm warmers as well. Uh, and if, you're, if your sweater that you're using has a hood already, very often I cut the hoods out and I make little um, like kids hoods, mm -hmm. like a little child's hat out of them. And you can see from this one, um, the scraps I often use for embellishment. So the nice thing about having a felted sweater is that when you cut it, the, um, the edges are very defined. So you won't get a lot of unraveling from any knit, but from a felted sweater, you'll get better definition in your, if you want to. I have, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a home studio and I'm lucky enough to have a sewing machine. It's a nice little beast that I paid, you know, $99 for 10 years ago and it's still working great. Um, uh, if anyone does have a sewing machine and they want to work with wool, uh, a walking foot is going to be your best investment. Um, so I can cut, so this hasn't been felted. This, is, this has been felted. And so very definitely that edge is not going to come apart. So I see Amy's question. Definitely felt your sweater before you uh, cut it up. So I have had kind of felting emergencies where I've really needed to felt something after I cut it up, you do end up with a lot more fluff than you want. Um, to, to, to felt a sweater, it's really best done in a top loading machine. Uh, and we're, really, we're not felting. Um, felting is a specific technique that is from raw fleece uh, to a, a, a fabric. Um, we're fulling. So when you, anytime you take something that's already been knit, and you compress it like that, like you make it into a felt like material, it's called fulling. So to, to full a sweater, um, you want to abuse it. Uh, you do all the things that your mother told you never to do with wool, okay? Also, uh, anything 70% wool or more will felt really well. Anything between 50 and 70%, or if you don't know, you can give it a go, um, but it might not, have the same results as what you'd like, okay? You really want to aim for something that has 70% more of wool, cashmere, um, merino, any of those, that kind of animal fiber. Alpaca felt beautifully, um, or fulls beautifully. So anything in that realm. Um, throw it in the washing machine. A top loader is best. I really haven't tried it with a front loader. I have heard people have good results with it. You want hot water you can throw in a couple of tennis balls um, and you wanna put it on the biggest agitation for the longest time that you can. When I'm doing more than one sweater uh, in the same load, I put them in an old pillowcase and safety pin the top closed. So that way you're not getting the little fuzzies from one sweater onto another and like in full multiple colors at the same time. Um, like does the wool have better properties for retaining heat than other fabrics or are there fabrics that you would not wanna heat up okay so the one of the reasons i love wool so much uh is it is very resilient okay so um when you heat up wool it'll stay warm longer uh, that's not really the main thing of that it doesn't like to burn so if anybody's familiar with burn tests from fabrics one of the tests about seeing if your fabric is wool or not is to light it on fire and at our house, we like to light things on fire. Um, mm -hmm. We homeschool, so the kids and I burn all kinds of things. Um, things they don't let you do in school. Um, so wool really is, is fire resistant. Um, we have a wool mattress, in fact. Uh, they're allowed to make mattresses out of wool without putting a flame retardant on it because wool is fire resistant. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and also we don't have a microwave. So when I want to warm things up, so I made a, I made warmers for the beds out of cherry pits. 
which is like a Northern European thing. So cleaned cherry pits retain heat really, really well. Uh, but I put it in a wool case so that I can just put it in a Pyrex dish in the oven and warm it up. Or if you have a wood stove, you could put it on a Pyrex dish on top of the wood stove and it'll- Should it be up. at a low heat? Uh, it should, no, it can be at a higher heat, it's okay. Really? okay. It won't, yeah, it won't scorch. I mean- Okay, don't walk away. Not direct flame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe not direct flame. Um, but that's one of the nice things about wool. Another kind of unrelated awesome thing about wool is that it, um, it, so if you get, if you're perspiring or if you're wet, like if it's raining or something, wool absorbs moisture, but it also retains heat at the same time. So it is actually one in, in Northern like Maine or anywhere, actually wool, on, wool long underwear is one of the best things to wear. It gets a little heavy, but it, unlike cotton long underwear, um, where if you perspire, you're gonna feel cold. If you wear wool, uh, it'll absorb that moisture and keep you dry and warm at the same time. We did test it. Joy, Joy? Um, do you know, is it true that uh, lavender is um, a moth retardant? I thought I'd seen that somewhere. I've, I've heard that. Um, when I get my, textiles second hand okay if it is something that i can't wash on high heat so i used to work in infection control in a hospital setting um you, if you wash anything at high like hot water uh, and a little bit of soap it'll kill and high heat on the in the dryer you're fine like it'll kill anything okay uh if i can't do that if it's something um like the cashmere uh, i put it in a bag and i put it in the freezer for three days so that's okay. the way I have. Do you, I have, do you never um, full cashmere? I do sometimes. Um, I, because the cashmere I tend to use more for things like uh, long underwear or um, I use, I do two kinds of blankets. I do blankets where um, I butt the seams and I join the seams together with a zigzag stitch. That, that is the method I use for a thicker felted blanket. Uh, cashmere and things I haven't fold, I make an actual seam and I turn the blanket inside out. Mm. Um, so it just depends on the, the fabric. So yeah, things like cashmere or more delicate, sometimes I have like a silk and merino blend. I tend to put that in the freezer because I, I don't always know what I'm going to use it for. These are going to be great movies.